Hello, 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 everybody. It is Matt, and it is Terrifying Tuesday, and I am back at you with yet another review. Before I roll on to any of that, I want to wish each and every one of you a great morning, evening, dawn, day, or dusk, all that lovely stuff, because life really is too short as is. Do me a really huge favor and like, share, and subscribe. I love seeing your beautiful faces when you are here. I know I'm here an awful lot, but I have an awful lot on my plate to review. And one last little tidbit of information. Check out the description box. I give you a bigger bite of every single movie of every single day. Today, I give you your brief synopsis, your starring cast, director, runtime of the cut I am watching, along with the link for a trailer, a link for where you can watch this one for free if you decide. And if you'd like, you can help support Matt's Movie Mania and toss me a couple of bucks. Now that I got all that said in mind and all that out of the way, let's roll on to the film of the day. <clears throat> now this one is a very interesting one. It is the latest film from uh, our dear, dear friend from Florida, Kelly Helen Thompson, who is one of my favorite directors To I, I just always love watching her films. Um, you never know exactly what you're gonna get. Now this latest one, it's called Ruby's Multiverse came out in uh, 2023, runs at one hour and seven minutes long. So it's not a long one. You um, you can usually watch uh, Kelly's, Kelly's films with the, you can watch two within the time of watching one long, really long movie. Um, her stuff, is, it tends to run on a shorter side, uh, but I think they run at the, the, the right amount of time in my opinion. Um, it, they, she doesn't linger on anything, um, doesn't make things last longer than they really should. Um, so I really enjoy her style of filmmaking. It is DIY at its finest. Now exactly what is Ruby's Multiverse about? Well, Ruby's Multiverse is, a, is kind of a mixture of all of her films pushed in together. Um, they all, uh, basically Ruby... Uh, and her her husband or boyfriend, whatever he was, uh, boyfriend. Uh, they go off. Um, it, it starts off at the very be uh, um, end of her last movie, which was the Tinker Man, which I absolutely love. Um, check that one out. Um, but uh, it ends with the what happens on the end of. It starts with what happens at the end of the Tinker Man. And her and Ned are going into this time portal. Um, it takes her through different uh, uh, forms of her universes. Um, so you get Lefty Lucy in there. You get uh, Violet's Prey in there. You get uh, The Assignment, uh, A2 The Anomaly. Um, uh, you also get uh, The Tinker Man. And uh, um, I'm trying to think if if uh what else ties in through it uh but it basically it ties in all of her for all of her movies she's done and makes it into one giant universe um i really and i really think it's cool um i think she did a great job um so this one uh like i said it starts out with her and ned uh going through the portal um they wake up in a different time. Uh, Kelly's hair is back for one uh, because at the uh, end of, of Tinker Man, um, at one point, uh, the Tinker Man is um, uh, kind of like torturing her, um, trying to get some some uh, uh, um, uh, some uh, gosh, just just some something out of her to prove that, um, I forget what exactly it was, um, cause it's been a hot minute since I watched the Tinker Man, but, um, uh, he eventually, like, with his torturing, he shaves her head, uh, gives her a horrible makeover, and just does all these kind of, kind of, uh, weird things to her. Um, the shaving the head was messed up. I was just like, damn, that's messed up. Because he left, like, ball patches all over the head. So she looked pretty funky. Um, but uh, uh, you got also Greta is in here making her performance. Um, granted, yes, it's not Abby Burgess anymore. Um, she got super sick and I believe she passed away if memory serves me correct. 
Um, so she was unable to return, obviously, to play her part. Um, the girl that plays Greta does a very good job. Um, it's just not the same without Abby. Um, Abby was Abby really had a great screen presence that um, this uh, this new girl doesn't quite capture as well. Um, even though she's good, uh, because she she goes she has her part where she's helping Ruby or Lucy or or um, any of the other names that um, she's used throughout the series. Um, she basically. Uh, um, does everything she can to help them. Um, she stops uh, uh, Ruby from getting the uh, the last batch of Violet's uh, perfume. Um, Violet's perfume is uh, made of, I believe, if memory serves me, it was vampire's blood. And what it did was give them strength and, and youth but then all of a sudden it would uh, turn them really, really old. So it, it has, a, has a lot going on for it in, as far as the movie goes. It's kind of hard to talk about just because it jumps around so much um, because you jump between uh, what's going on with all the different characters with Kelly Helen Thompson, um, you jump in with Ned, um, Gustavo Perez's character, um, Michael D. Pelez, I believe is how his, his, his name is pronounced. I know him as the uh, uh, Tampa Bay Spider-Man, um, but uh, he does a great job as well. I think everybody does does a great job for their small parts that they have in this, whether, I mean, whether it's small or large. Um, I really enjoyed this one. Um, as far as the three things that I like my movies to meet, first is audio. Um, uh, um, Kelly knows how to do audio very well. She knows how to get her characters um, uh, to uh, perform their lines uh, to the point to where you can understand and hear them and not have to rewind it and re replay it just so you can uh, get a, another another chance to understand what is being said um so i'm going to give it an a uh on to the uh, dialogue i think the dialogue is very fun it's got some funny stuff in it it's got some very serious stuff in it it's got everything that you can really need in a film especially in today's climate it fits very well um, they, they touch on topics like COVID, um, uh, what else, uh, but, uh, either way, they, they touch on, they touch on, on topics that are, are, um, are current in today's climate. So I really, really enjoyed that. So I'm going to give it an A plus on the dialogue. Now on to editing. Editing is, is good. It's, uh, uh, runs at a good time. It keeps a nice forward, steady pace. Uh, never gets boring. Um, most of most of the time, I, I I'm thoroughly thoroughly uh, um, entertained by what Kelly has to do on screen. Um, so I I just I'm always always happy to see her stuff because she knows how to edit a film together in a very good fashion. Um, so I'm gonna give that another A. So we got three A's. A A A. All right, in its final score of one through five, I'm going to give this one a four out of five. It's not my f absolute favorite from Kelly, but it is it is uh, uh, in the top, I would say top three. Um, my favorite by far is probably either Violet's Prey or Lefty Lucy. Um, those are one and two. Like, like, I don't know which one I like more. I, those are both just amazing films. All right, guys, love your faces. Sorry, my voice is still sounding gravelly as hell. Um, I'm not sick. I just, my voice is just like horse, and I, 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 and I don't know what to do to fix it. All right, guys, love your faces. Be back at you on Thursday and Saturday this week with reviews. And always, peace. Uh.